A good Wednesday evening to you. This is Pastor Jones here at Valley Assembly of God. Once again, delving into our midweek Bible study and getting ready to close this out next week. I hope you've enjoyed it. It has been a long study. It has dealt with every aspect of the Christian worker. And I hope it's challenged you and helped you both in your walk and your service unto the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to pick up where I left off last week as we're talking about the Christian worker's reward. And there is reward for serving God. And we're investigating every aspect of it. And tonight, I want to talk about, starting out tonight, the reward to the talent user. Let's pray before we get into it, shall we? Heavenly Father, thank you for this midweek time in which we can gather together and draw close to you around the Word of God and study it out and, Lord, become very keenly aware of its pertinence and its relevance to us and our lives. And, Father, as we talk about reward, uh, we did last week, we will tonight, and we will wrap it up next week. I pray, God, that as, as reward should not be the only motivation for us to serve you and to run after you. But I do pray it will be part of the incentive that God has provided for us to be the faithful workers and, and stewards that you have called us to be. May you anoint your messenger and your word tonight, we pray. We thank you for it. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, don't forget, if you're not able to be here Sunday, there is a YouTube available. But I pray that when we do come back this coming Sunday, you'll be sitting out in the pews. And uh, may I say it's such a delight to see so many back and the church beginning to return to normal. And uh, what a joy and delight. The reward to the talent user. The talents represent the natural powers which are possessed by us. Every one of us, without exception, have talent. These are not possessed to the same extent by all. In other words, some are more talented than others. One servant had five talents, the Bible says. Another had two. A third had only one. They were given according to each one's several ability. The Lord did not expect so much from one who had only one talent as he did from the servant who possessed five. But he did expect every man to use what God had given him. That goes for you and I this, this evening. Whatever your talent or talents are, there's an expectation by God that you use what God has given you. The man who did not use his talent received no reward, while the other two were rewarded according to the use that they had made of the talents of which God had graced them with. This parable reminds us of our individual responsibility to use what powers we have in service to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me make something clear. You're not serving me. You're not serving the local church. You're not serving the assemblies of God. You are serving the Lord. And we have responsibility to God. Scripture will serve us to illustrate what talents are if we note the natural traits in the lives of some of its characters. Daniel used his skillful mind in the apt manner in which he filled the office of legislator in the kingdom of Babylon. David, the sweet singer of Israel, used his voice and his pen in singing and setting forth the grace and the glory of God in the Psalms. The keeper of the Egyptian prison recognized the natural ability which Joseph had in giving him the oversight of all the other prisoners in his care. The talent was further manifested in the rule which Joseph exercised under Pharaoh as he was second only to Pharaoh in all the land. Elijah, evidently recognized by the way in which Elisha handled the plow that he would make a fit successor to himself. 
There will be many, my friends, who will say, but I don't have all those talents. Are you one of them? I hope not. Because once again, I, I make it very clear to you, every one of us have talents and abilities that God has graced us with. It may be true that you don't have all the talents of a, a Daniel, a David, a Joseph, an Elisha. But the Lord does not expect from you any more than what he has given to you. And once again, let me remind you, every one of us have a talent and ability. And God expects us to use it to his glory and to his honor. We can expect no greater commendation in which no greater reward than the woman who received from the Lord Jesus when she said she had done what she could. For after all, the highest life consists not in doing magnificent things, but rather in doing common things in a magnificent way. So whatever God has given you, whether it's one or five or ten or whatever, use what God has given to you in a magnificent way to make a difference. And God will greatly and graciously and wonderfully reward you for that. Number seven, the reward of the pound employer. The parables of the talents and pounds are sometimes thought to be one and the same. They are not. One general observation is, in, is sufficient to prove that. In the parables of the talents, there is a diversity of bestowment. One man has five, the other has two, another has one talent. But in the parable of the pounds, each man receives alike. We read the nobleman called the ten servants and gave them ten pounds and said unto them, Trade ye herewith until I come. Luke, the 19th chapter, 13th verse. That each servant got a pound is evident. For in the reckoning day, each servant said to his Lord, Thy pound. The question naturally arises, what, it represented, what is represented here by the pound? I think it's the gospel, folks. Every child of God is a servant. And to each one of us is committed the word of reconciliation, 2 Corinthians 5 and 18, with which we are to trade till our Lord returns. Then the question will be asked, what use have you made of the gospel I gave to you? God's not just talking to the preacher. He's talking to every individual Christian who have been recipients of the gospel and now have been made servants of the Lord to reconcile the lost world back to God. How have you used that glorious gospel in your life to bring some man, some woman, some teenager, some boy or girl to a saving knowledge in the Lord Jesus Christ? We can trade with the gospel and thus increase what we have by passing the seedlings onto others which will grow up into trees of blessing. The reward for faithful trading with the gospel will be in proportion to the use we made of that pound. And my friends, I pray, especially in this moment in time which we are living, we are, we are utilizing the full extent of the gospel to reach those round about us. Because Jesus is coming soon. It is harvest time. And if we wait or we hesitate, we're going to lose our opportunity and souls will be lost. Number eight, the reward to the faithful steward. The office of a steward is repeatedly referred to in the New Testament. The Lord's steward, or servants rather, are stewards of the mysteries of God. 1 Corinthians 4 and 1. 
and of the manifold grace of God, 1 Peter 4 and 10. As such, we are to be blameless in life, Titus 1, 7. Faithful in servant, in service rather, 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 2. Faithfulness is the one thing which is required of a steward. And where it is found, it will meet with the master's well done. You know, one of those glorious moments in eternity, I was going to say time, but eternity. Well, when we find ourselves ushered into God's presence and we hear God say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. One of the most touching incidents of faithfulness is found in the following story of how a faithful dog lost its life in serving its master. Let me read it to you, and I pray it will impact you like it did me. One night in the Scottish Highlands, when the snow was deep upon the mountainside, a shepherd found that two of his flock were still out in the storm. Calling his faithful collie, or shepherd's dog, he rousted her from her warm kennel where she was lying with her young pups and pointing to the open door he held up two fingers and said go. Well she understood his meaning and she gave one pitiful look at her little pups and then one appealing glance at him but there was no relenting look. Quietly and promptly she passed out through the open door into the dark and into the wintry night. It was late in the night when the shepherd was rousted by a scratching at the door. And as he opened it, there was one of the lost sheep. And the tired dog dragged herself through the door, lay it down, and once more found her place in the kennel with her young. He carefully nursed the tired sheep, and then again he called the faithful dog. And pointing his finger through the open door, he called, One is still lost, go. Tenderly she gazed once more at her young. Longingly she clung to her little brood, pleading as she gazed into her shepherd's eyes and seemingly to say, Must I do it again? But still there was no reprieve in his glance. There was but one message, and that was to go. And slowly she dragged herself again to the door and went forth into the darkness. The dawn had come. Before the shepherd was again awakened to find the lost sheep there. And the poor dog, scarcely able to drag herself to her corner, laid down to die. As she pressed her little ones to her breast and gasped out her last breath, he gently patted her on the head and tried his best to say, good and gentle servant, you did your best. Listen now. She was but a dog. For her there was no heaven, no crown, a bright reward, no higher motive for obedience. Beloved, with so much more for us in the future, Shall you and I be less faithful than that shepherd dog? And all that awaits us, let's rise up and let's be the faithful steward that God has called us to be in this moment in time. Number nine, the reward of the true worker. If any man's work abides, 1 Corinthians 3 and 14, which he hath built thereon, he shall receive a reward. Whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward. Colossians 3, 23 and 24. What powerful verses those are. What reassurance from God. Listen to this. A little boy was lying in a hospital. His hand had been amputated. The nurse in response to his request brought the amputated hand to him. As he felt it with the other hand, it was cold and lifeless. 
But the small young man felt he could not part with the member which had been so useful to him without a part a parting greeting. As he handed it back to the nurse, he said, Goodbye. I shall get you back at the resurrection. And my friends, there are a good many things that you and I are going to get back at the resurrection. And among the many things that we will get back will be the works, the deeds done in this body of which God has given us to live. For they will determine the kind of reward that you are going to receive at the hands of God. Number 10, the reward of the considerate helper. I like that. I hope you're a considerate helper. Looking out for people, caring about people. The word of God abounds with promises of reward to those who minister to the need of other people, especially those who help those who are not able to make any return. There is no greater joy than to give joy to other people. He who feeds others feeds himself. He who helps others helps himself. Those who help others for the sake of Christ never think of the pains it gives them, but of the pleasures it bestows upon those who they helped for their sake. The highest good next to being good is to do good, for this goes up to God as a sweet-smelling savor. How long has it been since you have done good unto somebody else? I'm always trying to be a blessing to somebody. I'll send a text. I'll make a phone call. I, I, I will do everything within my power to brighten somebody's day. I'll joke around with them a little bit to get a, a little bit of laughter, a smile on their face, hoping that after the time I've spent with them, that when we part ways, that that they're a little richer for the time that I've spent with them. Is that your intent? Is that your desire? Is that the way your life goes? My friends, something will happen when our Lord returns. For every cup of water given in his name, for every kindly word that you have spoken for his sake, for every meal given out of love to him, for every encouragement given to other people, for every self-denying act to our brethren, there is going to be a recognition and a recompense from our Lord Jesus Christ. I was thinking the other day of a gentleman that visited me on a number of occasions over the past few years. He tragically was killed in a head-on collision uh, about two years ago, I think it's been now. But I would just, for whatever reason, the Lord brought that individual to my mind. And I thought to myself, the many times we talked and then parted ways, I pray I did him good. I pray I brightened his day. I pray I spoke a word of encouragement into him. But you know, that's not just my opportunity in the course of life. Every one of us have those kind of opportunities. Let's not let them slip through our grasp. When God brings somebody along our way and they need a word of encouragement, a word of hope, a hand of help, may you and I be the individuals that stand in the gap and make a difference in that moment in time. Oh, my friends, God keeps awful good books. You never have to fear one day when you stand before him that the things you've done in this life did not catch his glance. He has seen it all, and he will reward you accordingly. Next week, we're not only going to wrap up this portion on reward, we will wrap up this entire study as we begin to lay the groundwork for a brand new study ahead. You'll not want to miss it. Bow your heads with me tonight, would you please? Heavenly Father, thank you for your word tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful promise of reward that's coming 
to every single believer, God, that's up and going for you and makes these moments in time of life count for the kingdom, for our Christ, and for those about us. I pray, Lord, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hands that are quick to extend under the needs of other people and to help them in the way. Father, I pray, God, one day we will stand before you and I pray every one of us will hear that well done, thou good and faithful servant. Welcome thou in to the joys of the Lord. Prepare us now, God, I pray, for the Sunday that's coming. Keep us safe between now and then. And God, prepare our hearts to really come and worship you and to be recipients of your word, we pray. Into your hands we commend ourselves now and we thank you. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you once again for joining with us. I pray once again we've challenged your heart. Have a great rest of the week. I'm going to be looking for you Sunday morning. And I'm believing God to give us a great, great day in the Lord. God bless you and we'll see you then.